Hello everyone, so in this video I am going to show you the min comparison options in SPSS. So what do I mean by min comparisons? So when we have multiple groups and we want to see the mean score of the groups and if there is a significant difference between the mean scores or among the mean scores, so that's when we will be using min comparisons. And here you can see I come to analyze and then min comparisons and these are the all main comparisons options that I have that we have so the first one is mean which is a very simple one which nor which only gives the means of the multiple groups that's it nothing else it we cannot do hypothesis testing based on means based on this option okay so let's have a look how does it look like so if I click here here it is dependent list so normally for means you know we will need continuous variables and I'm using the old data set that I've been using in the previous videos so here you see that uh, we have this uh, five variables which are continuous variables so I'll be using two of them I'll put them in the dependent list and I'll click OK and then we simply see the means of these two groups. So mean of reading score is 52.23 and writing is 52.77. We can have many groups, as many groups as possible, uh, as many groups as we want. And here we see we have the n is 200 number of observations and we have no missing values. And we also see the standard deviations here. So that's it actually we get from means. In, in, in the means option, we have another option here you can see layer one so we can actually categorize the mean of different variables for a categorical variable for instance if I pick gender in layer one then I will see the mean of male and female for these two re for, for these two variables here okay so let's have a look how does it work I will click OK simply and here as you see I have the gender uh, in, in my case uh, 0 was male and 1 is female so I dummy coded them and there are means for reading and writing and again the means for female uh, in, in reading and writing so and uh, we also see the number of observations in, in male group and female group so in male we have 91 in female we have 109 and we also see the standard deviations in both in both cases and the total score as well so that's what we get from the only mean option. But maybe we are not really, uh, maybe we are not really interested only in checking the means, but we want to see if there is a significant difference among the two groups. We want to do some hypothesis testing. Or maybe, let's, let's go through one by one. So let's go to the one sample t-test. So when we use one sample t-test, we use one sample t-test when we want to compare mean of one group of people with a hypothesized number okay mean let's let's see uh, I'm going to click one sample t-test so let's say I pick reading a score here as my test variable so the reading score mean is approximately 52 right as we have seen before here we can see our uh, reading score is yeah about 52 but let's say we normally see that in these kind of exams people normally score 60 but in our case people are scoring 52 but is 52 significantly different from 60 when we consider for the standard deviation and the distribution of the data is it significantly different from 60 or not that's what we want to see we have a hypothesized number in our mind and that's when we use this one sample t-test so I'm just gonna put the hypothesis number here and I will click OK so this is the output we get we have 200 observation mean and standard deviation of my dependent variable here we see the t-test score t-test score it's a uh, minus 10.71 which is way high than minus uh, 1.96 high way extreme than minus 1.96 normally the t-score I think um, for two tail tests like here where we do not know the when where we do not know the direction and normally we would uh, have a value of 1.96 for a statistical significance of 0 
at 5% statistical significance. So it's, it's uh, much extreme than that. That means there is a significant difference in the values, in, in the mean score of reading and in the value of 60. And the difference is here, minus 7.77. We also have a confidence interval here. The lower confidence interval is minus 9 and upper is minus 6.34. So it's, it's a confidence interval for the difference. So the difference is here, but the lower limit is 9 minus 9.19 and the higher limit is minus 6.34, okay? So now again, we go to mean, we have another type, independent samples t-test. So when do we use this? When we want to compare means of two groups, okay, two different groups. That's when we can use this independent sample t-test. Let's have a look. So let's say I pick again the reading score. So in this categorical variables, we have gender. In gender, we have two categories, so we can maybe use that as a grouping variable. We have also, prog oh, I think we have any school type, we also have two categories, so we could have used that as well. But we cannot use these, race, SES, or program, because there we have more than two categories. So independency, independent sample t-test is only for two categories. Okay, so we have to define the categories, zero and one, zero is for male and one is for female, continue and okay. So we get this result. So what do we actually have here? Here we have some summary. In total we have 200 and we have 91 male and 109 female and their means, their standard deviation and their standard error. So when we look here in the independent sample t-test results, here actually what we first get is Leneve's test for equality of variance. So for when we do mean comparisons of different groups, there we have this assumption that the variances of the different groups should be equal. And that's what we get here from the Leneve's test for equality of variance test, which is done by default by SPSS. And in this test, the null hypothesis is that, that the variances are equal across groups. And alternative hypothesis is that the variances are not equal across group. Okay. So as we see, the significance value here is higher than 0 0.05. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we go for the null hypothesis because we cannot reject it. So the null hypothesis is that, that variances are equal across group. So when our equal variances are assumed, then we will look into the first row of the results. If our significance value here was not, uh, was, was less than 0 0.05 and our null hypothesis was rejected, then we would go for this row. Then we would go for the second row where, when equal variances are not assumed. But in this case, this is not the case. So we can actually look into the first row, okay? So now from here, we have the real result for the independent sample t-test. So first F, F statistic and significance value, that's for the Leneve's test for equality. And then we come here in the test for equality. So we see the t-value is actually quite low. And as we have two groups, so degrees of freedom is the whole sample minus two. So that's why we have uh, 198 and as the TS score is quite low which is quite low than uh, 1.96 as I said before like normally for um, for 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 two tail test uh, we would expect values of TS score higher than minus 1.96 or plus 1.96 uh, extreme than plus or minus 1.96 to get a significant value at a statistical significance of 5% but which we did not get here. So that's why we do not have a significant difference among the, uh, among the two groups here. So from here we can conclude that there is no significant difference in the reading score of the male and female students. And accordingly we have the mean difference here and standard error and lower and upper limits for the mean difference. Okay, so that's it for this part. But then let's say we want to see difference among more than two groups. What can we do? On those cases, we have to go for one way ANOVA when we, we, when we want to compare the means of more than two groups. Uh, it could be three, it could be five, it could be any, any groups, any number of groups more than, more than three, okay? 
Um, maybe I would not compare 10 groups, but like three, four, five, six, uh, that's fine. Okay, so in those cases, we'll go for one way over. So let's click here and see how it looks like. So we'll just, uh, we first have to drag the dependent variable here and let's say which one uh, can be picked. Let's say we pick the program. In program, we have three categories, vocational, academic, and general. So we will pick that as a factor, okay? And we'll click okay. So now we get the result for ANOVA, okay? So we have the sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean of squares, F statistics, and significance. So we see that the significance is very high. But we have to remember one thing, when we have ANOVA results, the interpretation of the significance value here is that there is a significant difference between at least two of the groups in our uh, data. So we, we have more than three group, more than two groups. So in, in, in this case, we had three groups. So we have significant difference between at least one of the groups, one of the two groups. It could be in all of them there is a significant difference, but it, it may not be the case. Maybe it's only one group where maybe there is uh, significant difference among only one group or between only one group so may not be among all of them but could be also among all of them okay so that's that's the situation so here we see that okay there is significant difference uh, between the groups here but then maybe we're interested to see actually among which groups there is a significant difference so in this case we will get again we'll go again to analyze we'll go to compare means one way and over so we can do some post hoc test to see this I'll go for this. So here uh, we have two options, equality of variance assumed, equality of variance not assumed. So most of the cases, maybe we will assume equality of variance. Let's say we assume equality of variance and I'm picking this one, Takis B. This is one of the most common one. So I'm just going to click continue and I'm setting my significance at 5% level. I'll click continue and okay. So this is the result I get. So here, subset for alpha 0.05 so we have two groups homogeneous subsets so in the first group we see that group 3 and 1 are together this means that at 5% statistical significance there is no significant difference between the group 1 and group, group 3 but group 2 is another subset which means there is a significant difference between group 2 and 1 and group 2 and 3 okay so that's what it means and so what what if we assumed equality of a uh, non-equality of variance so we can also see that uh, here we'll see that we'll actually get the same result so i go to post -hoc again i'm unticking this and i'm let's say i'm going for this one games whole will okay continue and okay so here again you will see that the significance here there is a significant difference between group one and group two but not with group one and group three okay Again, group two and one, but not between, no, yeah, again, group two and one and group two and three, but not with group one and three, okay? If you remember, like in the previous case, we had group one and three in the same group, so they were not significantly different from each other. But again, similar to that, we, we have group one and, there's a difference between one and two and one and, uh, and two and three, okay? These are the different ones which we see here as well. So yeah, the significance values here other significant differences. We also have accordingly the confidence intervals, lower bounds and upper bounds for the differences. Yeah, that's what we have here. But now let's say we had some some situation where we had collected data from one group of people multiple times, okay? So I have I have I have students have done the reading reading test in 2018 and again in 2019 and I want to see if there is a significant difference in the reading score of 2019 and 2018 of the same students. In such cases, when we collect data repeatedly from the same sample, we have to use paired sample t test. In those cases, we cannot use the others one. Okay, so we'll click here. But now the problem is that we do not really have any variable which which represents uh, which represents repeated measures. But just to show you, I will just pick reading, and I am assuming that 
writing is my reading score in 2019. It's just I'm assuming now, okay? It's, it's just to show you how it works. Then I'll click OK. And this is the result that we will get. So the differences in the mean and standard deviation, standard error. Uh, we will again get the confidence intervals accordingly and the t-value is very low. So there is no significant difference in the reading score of the two years. So I, I was just assuming that writing is my reading score in the next year. So that's why I'm, I'm concluding that there is no difference in the two years. Okay, so that's all. These are all the mean comparison options and I have compared all of them. I, I have, I have uh, covered all of them. So again, just to repeat, the first one mean is only to see the mean score of different groups, but we cannot do hypothesis testing. One sample t-test is when we have a hypothesis value and we compare that value with with with, with a mean of some data, uh, some data distribution of some continuous data. So that's when we use this independent sample t-test. When we compare means of two different groups, then we use independent sample t-test. When we compare data of the same sample co collected multiple times then we use paired sample t-test and when we have more than when we compare more than two categories two groups uh, then we use one way ANOVA thank you for watching this video if you like it please like comment share and don't forget to subscribe to our channel